Yes. And that's how I am going to get the help. You're going to stay up there. Okay. I'm going to get the help. 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 Okay. I'm going to get
Blake had sent me an email saying, we'll build it, and they said, sounds awesome. What will you do this to? Which is build the scheduling stuff. And they said, yeah, we're crazy. Sure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and they did a fantastic job. Did you guys like being able to pick the sessions you really wanted to go to? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, see? Thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Who wants to download the site? The site is actually available to download. Uh, Minus it's graphics. It's under DDL. <laughs> Minus what? Minus graphics. <laughs> uh, we, yeah. and, that, and that's good. Um, and that, that's kind of my background on how you guys got involved. Uh, there, there's more to it. I mean, we, we could talk about... Yeah, we want them to talk. We Yeah, exactly. We want them to talk. Blake, Blake and I have... Uh, Done. Blake's volunteered quite a few things with me, so I, I know Blake more from uh, scale, and uh, he's he's really op into the open source world. And yeah. go for it. But you want to give me that? Yeah. No, that's <clears throat> yeah. I'm hand up for the Ladies and gentlemen, this by them. Stuff. <laughs> that was great. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming out, and uh, hopefully we will bore you. My name is Lance Troxel. Um, I am design side of this by them, the three of us. Um, I also do some theming, but mostly CSS stuff, so I don't really have any um, questions afterwards that have to do with dev. I, I'm not going to really answer them. I'm really not really smart when it comes to that. So that's my section and my part of this, and I'll hand off to. Hello, I am Scott Nelson. Um, I kind of in the tech head. Um, it fixes my then. computer a lot. I fix Lance's uh, stuff quite a bit. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was really our pleasure to do the site, but um, to be honest, actually, Blake did a lot of the heavy lifting, so he's going to be uh, talking uh, the majority of the presentation. Yeah. So I'm going to hand this off to him. Cool. And we thank Blake for, <laughs> for all that he did. Awesome. Um, can you guys hear me? Is it, is it picking up on this one? Okay. Better. If you move it up better. closer, okay. like, it does actually. That's okay. I'll just talk with this. All right, how's it going, guys? I'm Blake, uh, Blake Casey, and I uh, did a lot of the development side of things, but also helped kind of drive the planning, uh, as well as uh, you know coordinating with Lance and Mike and coordinating for all the all that type of stuff. Uh, before we get going, the distribution, uh, Mike already talked about it a little bit, but some of the the benefits of the distribution we thought would be that people could easily set up their own camp or. Uh, community-based organization website uh, pretty easily because of the way that the sessions were handled um, and things like that. Uh, the difficulties, though, was that um, a lot of the things that we did are all based on views and CCK. So finding a way to easily distribute that is, is kind of difficult. And so uh, what we ended up doing was actually just dumping the database without all of your guys' personal information in it um, and making it so you just basically set up the database and you know point your settings.php file so it connects and um, you're set up with a, basically a, a blank theme with all the blocks everywhere and you have the whole site set up. So there's no sort of installer that you guys need to run or anything like that. So um, yeah, the process. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, but we actually built the site in about two and a half weeks from start to finish. So pretty, pretty quick development time. And uh, a lot of that came down to our planning process. and. Um, making sure that we knew what we wanted before we started on things. So our process includes uh, planning. Essentially, after, after planning, we, we put together wireframes, which are usually low resolution. And I have a couple examples here to show you. But they, they basically lay out all the, the aspects of the site on each of the pages. Um, then we move into the design and the development phase, which we actually do side by side. So because we use detailed, more detailed wireframes, uh, we're actually able to develop a lot of the site out at the same time as Lance is designing. And uh, that saved us a lot of time. Um, just talked about development. Uh, after the design is done and all the development's done, so we have all the, all the code and all the, the markup is placed throughout the site, we can then move on to the theming phase where uh, we'll start slicing up the mockups and start adding CSS and start really kind of going through the process of, uh, of polishing the website off. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about the ongoing maintenance involved and how that worked out. Uh, so the planning phase uh, for, for this particular site, we draft a specification document which outlined each of the sections of the site and uh, almost like a, like, a, like, a, like a site map with details about each page, what we wanted on that page, uh, where we wanted things. 
and then talked about the features. So that kind of you know talks about where we want things, how we want things to interact. Um, different visitors need different things. So a lot of times when you're planning, you need to think about the types of visitors that will be coming to your website. Whether for this one it would be you know someone's coming to register, or someone is coming back to check on the sessions they already voted on, or someone's coming to talk and ask questions about the camp and, and try to figure out how they should register or how they're going to get there. Um, there's a lot of different use cases, and, and I think uh, it's really important to consider those before you begin your development phase because that's the only way you're going to be able to build something that everyone can use. Um, the result, heavily commented sitemap outline. And here's an example for the home page. Um, so we kind of broke this down into the, the things that are higher up on the list are more prominent or should be placed more prominently on the page. So the what, where, and when box, that would be the, 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 the sun, sand, code call out that you guys saw on the top left. Um, and that was sort of, we needed something to, to show when you go to the web page, you know exactly where you are and what's going on. Um, beyond that, we, we wanted to feature the sponsors pretty heavily because they, they put down a lot of money to make this event happen. And uh, we wanted to make sure that they're, they're, you know, they were focused on. Um, and then additionally, we needed to raise funds for the, the camp as well, so we needed to make it easy for sponsors to come and uh, make their donations. Um, latest news, so that was, you know, uh, we, we decided just to show the last news article post, and uh, the reason for that was to kind of cut down on size but allow us to post a single line announcement, and then you could read more if you wanted to. Um, the featured members, that was kind of a cool thing, um, and we can talk more about that later, but that was basically a view that showed attendees that we, we, can, we could choose and sort of highlight people from the community. And that was one of the things that Mike really wanted was this is a local camp, this is a community type deal. We wanted to be able to feature uh, people who are going to spend the time to come out, speak, present, put, you know, put things together, materials together to, to help teach the other attendees. Um, do you guys get a chance to read through all that? OK. Actually, um, there's a whole case study I wrote, and it's actually posted to the Drupal Camp website. And I can give you guys a link. Uh, I can post a link later on, on, our, on our slides here. Um, but it includes a full write-up. This, this entire document that we put together is, includes that. It includes all of our wireframes, all of our, um, none of the design. But yeah, so that it includes all that stuff. Moving on to the wireframes. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, sure. <clears throat> So well, I, I like, I like um, you, know, you want to move with that low resolution kind of thing. Um, well, I mean, I don't know how many of you actually use wireframes. Um, we've really been using them a lot over the last last year, I guess, more and more so, even on smaller sites. Uh, first off, it's really helpful for me as a designer just to start to kind of imagine where, where stuff goes. Sometimes as a designer, you think around the outside of the box and what the site's going to look like, and then then you got to stuff the content in versus like having the content there and letting the design come out of that. Out of that. Do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Do you, do you create your wireframes manually, or do you choose either a desktop tool or a manual? I do manually. I actually use InDesign, which is sometimes counterintuitive, but um, I like the way it outputs PDFs for clients and for us. Makes it easy. Um, <clears throat> and then from there, is it the next one? Yeah. So you can see what our wireframe, even having a little fun, adding the A-team. Um, so we, while we're visualizing that, and also it really helps instead of like when you have that first list of, you know, uh, site features and whatnot and paragraphs and text, everyone can visualize it. So um, we had that first list going. I did the wireframes. We all got in a little chat and talked about the wireframes. And then we're all visualizing what the content's going to look like. We sign off on it since this was just an internal site. And they start building, and then I start designing. So when I when they hand it over to me to start including, uh, uh, putting the graphics in and stuff, the blocks are kind of like there. A lot of it's already sort of done. This is just sort of a blank, you know, Zen theme with uh, that I've got to go through and actually mess up, and they have to fix. <laughs> um, so I think that covers the wireframe. Yeah. Okay. Sure. What did you wireframe? I don't know if I said InDesign. InDesign. So I've used Illustrator before, but that doesn't do multiple pages. InDesign's really nice, especially if you've got, we just did one that had 23 pages. So with a master page, then I can just do a header, and then it shows up on all the rest of the pages. And then being a designer, that's, you know, I'm used to using that when I do print stuff. So that's what I'm comfortable with. 
Any other questions about the live folks? Yes. Uh, general, general, but most of it's just sort of like a kind of a you know a sketch of you of where content needs to go, and then it always sorts of changes. You know, I mean, we tend to stick with the 960 um, unless the site's really small and we can go thinner with it. But that's always sort of in my mind, and then you know, especially if there's ad blocks, which this didn't have. Um, I work on a 960 grid uh, as well, so I always think of the thirds and and what. So that answers your question. I don't know. But the height, you mean? Uh, yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, if I start an eight and a half by 11 sheet, and then like the, the last one we did, because it's a much taller site, so I just went to legal size, just so the client actually could print it out, because I have to think about that as well. I mean, you know, we could go something that would be off, but then they wouldn't be able to print it out and see it, which is how they'd rather visualize it usually. Any other ones? Okay, Blake, cool. Can you guys hear me with this mic now? Is that better? Okay. Okay, so design, moving on. Back to Lance. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Great layout. Many <laughs> things. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to plug my own session here. Uh, I'm going to kind of cover some of this stuff in my, in the third, like my approach to Drupal design and uh, web design in general. But <clears throat> one of the, I think, main tips is when you're creating the design is to make sure that you're thinking about how it can be cut up. Um, we do development for clients where they've provided us a design, um, and it's, it's kind of insane sometimes when you get designs from designers that aren't thinking about the web at all. You know, they've got some crazy large graphic in the background that you can't cut up with weird stuff overlay, um, you know, tons of transparencies when the site has to go, you know, cross-browser and you're talking, what the hell am I going to get this in IE6? all that sort of stuff. So there's tricks that I've kind of come up with from just um, mm -hmm. my time in de uh, designing and then developing on how to cut something up and kind of fake it. Um, you know, using a lot of wrappers sometimes and centering background images. Um, but I do think it's really important when you're, as while you're designing, you're thinking, okay, how am I going to cut this up? And also, how is it going to expand? How's the text going to flow into that? Um, it's not a static you know, web pages obviously aren't, aren't static for the most part, especially if content like this has got to flow with news stories and things. So you have to think about how can it kind of move. And that always ends up limiting design. It's kind of a drag. It's much cooler when you like you look at, like Scott and I talk about this, um, Apple's pages on their, <coughs> on their site, which are just straight up HTML docs that they go in and they flow the text in and they know where to stop it. If they're doing a two column thing, they're not flowing it in from outside. They're just, you know, it's in the HTML so they can do the line breaks. They have total control over that. Obviously with Drupal, especially when you head over to clients and they're putting content in, you can't do that, you know. And you can't hope that they're always going to have, oh, at least hopefully the headline will always have at least five words in it because it won't. It'll either have 46 or it'll have a letter. And, you know, and then obviously it screws up the whole, like, you know, the look of the page. So those considerations have to be there as well. Was there a, oh, okay, here we go, we real fast, okay, real fast here over the comps. This was the first one I came up with. Uh, rough, you can see, didn't have any that sort of like the this by them grunge, which is kind of what I sort of do. Um, and it didn't look good. I don't think I design really clean sites very well. So we went back to it and it just wasn't happening. And then added some, added some kind of, um, a little bit of grunge, add a little bit of a shadow there on the, on the waves. Um, I think it's also important, which I'll probably cover again later on, um, try to figure out a way to create a, just a little bit of depth in your page. Um, it depends on the design. Some, if you're doing a really super clean guy, then you don't really have to do that, but it's nice to have the, you know, the eye can move back and forth. Also think about the way that, you know, you're looking at a page the same way that you're looking at an ad in, um, <clears throat> Uh, in a newspaper or something, you know, you open it up just from the way that we read. You start at the top left, you move around, and it's got a circle. So try to incorporate that as much as you can. Obviously, the folds go up and down depending on who's using it. If it's a, you know, if it, maybe it's an older user that's got seven toolbars and they've got about 325 pixels of web space on there, well, there's not much you can do. Um, and you can see, too, if you look at this versus what's on the site now, it's totally, there's a lot of it that's changed. Colors have changed. Um, 
I didn't really finish off the, the little clicker thing so much. Um, and that's also when you kind of get content in, and then I see it active in the browser, it sort of changes. It's like you kind of like let it into the world, and, uh, and you realize, oh, I gotta move this, I gotta move this, this isn't happening. And I'm forever tweaking little things like that, just trying to balance out the site. I, I, because I was involved with you guys, uh, one of my first questions was, because I saw these designs change each time. Well, one of my questions for you is, how, how did you guys, what, what was the conversation like? Are you doing this all yourself? Are you guys having conversations about it? How did it get from the first one to, to this? Or is that, what was it? I did the first comp. Uh, I did the, the kind of clean one, this one. And, you know, I mean, these guys are really cool. So they're like, yeah, no, man, it looks great. No, I don't know. Yeah, it looks great. Should I add some credit? Yeah, maybe, you know. And then Scott Bush, yeah, you kind of maybe said, no, it looks great. No, all right, I'll go back and I'll try again. And then uh, went back and tried again. Um, I'm going to also, again, plug in the session this afternoon, kind of cover how I do things and try to do things in Photoshop where I can change colors really easily. So I'm always using adjustment layers or things like that. So once the main stuff is in, then changing colors or swapping those things out is not such a pain in the butt. Um, so yeah, I kind of went conversation that way. And, and I guess it's sort of, it's, it's on me, but then they'll, they'll tell me when they're says, no, that's not happening. So Yes? Um, well, usually, actually, I do. Sorry. Oh, uh, how, he asked, "How do I deliver the comps?" Um, <clears throat> I do all the first cut up usually. So, um, Blake will probably talk about our workflow, maybe. I, I, I don't know. That, yeah. Okay, he's going to talk about the workflow and how we kind of, you know, use that. So, usually, they have they kind of um, send over, or I'm working on a basic dev, you know, wireframe, and then I do the first kind of cut up. So, um, yeah, I don't send it to anybody. They come right from me. Does that answer the question? Okay. Any other questions about the design part of the website? Great, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the development side. Um, and I kind of touched on before how we do development. We at least try to do development at the same time as the design whenever possible because we can kind of cut down the length of the, the project. And um, the biggest part of that comes down to having those detailed wireframes to, to be able to work off of, to understand what functionality is going to take place so that I know what modules that we need to use and I know, uh, you know, on top of that what I might have to write custom um, to get that sort of functionality. So the first round of development, usually we go through and place blocks and build out stub pages across the site. So like, um, yeah, uh, let's see. Make sure. Um, so I'll talk a little bit too about our workflow. Um, to kind of answer that question, we try to we, we usually use Git for any of our in-house stuff. Um, we use GitHub and um, for like other projects for like Warner Brothers, they use SVN, so we use SVN for that. Um, but basically, what what I'll do is I'll go through or Scott will go through and we'll set up a blank theme off of a Zen sub theme and um, create our own CSS file so it's blank so that when Lance gets in there to start working, he's working either off of the Zen wireframe theme or just the Zen with, with no styles, basically. Um, and we'll go through and we'll create all the pages and create all the blocks across the site. And then they, you know, they're unthemed, they're unstyled, they're just blank. And then Lance will go in and start doing his first round. And then we'll also, you know, go through and do CSS as well. But um, we let him have a good, you know, first go through his design so that he can sort of set some stuff out there. It actually, it actually ends up looking pretty similar to the, uh, the wireframe comps. Um, oh, can you hear me now? Um, it ends up looking pretty similar to those those wireframes that you saw. Um, it's just completely unthemed, but everything's kind of in place, and that way uh, Lance can at, start just plug in his design when he's done. Um, that's all I want to say. So. Okay, so I have a little example. I don't know how else to show up. Um, so we've kind of coined the the term uh, functional wireframe. So we just translate. The uh, static wireframe into a sort of working Drupal site. That's not right. Okay, so this is kind of what we get. This is what you guys will get when you install the camp website. But this is kind of what we start off of after the development is kind of done. And you'll see that I have the menu items up here. Um, so I've added all the menu items. So that we start getting that primary navigation going, with the secondary nav going. Um, I added a block in the header so that 
you know where it says you're registered in that, that big red and it kind of gives you that user nav menu. Like we add that to the top of the page TPL file so you can see where that is. Um, this is really weird. I can't. So this is really hard to show because the screen size is really small. Um, anyways, we'll go through here. I have for the block, the call out block where it talks about, you know, just the intro to the camp. We actually did that all in text and then we laid the, the, the background image behind it and then shifted the text out so you couldn't see it anymore. And that was more for SEO friendly purposes. Um, but it also gives us, you know, to start we actually have a block to work with so we know what's going to go there. And that can be themed afterwards. And I'll go down here and we have, you know, pick your sessions. I don't have any of the content in here right now because it's not there, but um, usually we'll go ahead and add fake nodes to stuff so that we, we start filling in the views that we've created and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> are, are the blocks generated through the admin interface or are you kind of manually putting code inside? Okay, so the question is, are we, are we manually putting code inside for the blocks or are we, we developing through the admin uh, section? Uh, that's a good question. A little bit of both. So the views blocks, like the pick your sessions, that was created through a view. So I just created the view. And even if the view isn't all the way done, like we don't have all the fields set up and the content type, so we don't have that type of... If that's not there, I'll just create the view and I'll put the block with like empty text. And then like these things are headers, so I added those in as the header links on the view. And that way we have stuff there to style when, when everything's ready to go. So if you're, if you're building the blocks, you can use first and you have the blocks you can build the place. Correct, yeah. So the question is we're, we're, we're building with views and, and yeah, we're building out the blocks with views. All of the static blocks, we are using the admin admin section to just add. Um, for this site, it's, this is more of kind of a, a one-off, quick, we need it up, you know, so we just went in and added some text blocks for like the, um, for all the banners you guys see on the right-hand side. I don't know if I can show you on this because I don't think the images will be there. Um, but like the banners on the right-hand side, we actually put text in there and then Lance went in uh, and then added the background image and styled it from there. So we actually have, you know, SEO-friendly type stuff like this become a sponsor, get, get swag at a session. So stuff like that. Um, and those, I wouldn't, I actually wouldn't even do those any other way. I would just go in the admin, the block admin and just add those. Um, I don't think I created any custom blocks through code um, for like custom module stuff because views, flag module, and CK basically did everything for us. So. Um, oh, flag. Yeah, I can talk about that too. Um, are there any other questions so far? Okay, so I guess a lot of you guys want to know how the sessions were handled, right, the voting and stuff. Um, we actually ended up doing uh, CCK node type for sessions, which there's none in here. So we can add a session. Okay. Um, we did a CCK node type, but then I also created a flag uh, using the flag module so that only registered users could flag those nodes. And uh, what that did is it gives us a count of all the people who flagged it. So it integrates really well with views. We can query for those, those fields. We can um, find out how many people voted on and flagged it. Um, there's a lot of cool other stuff with flag, too. You can actually set it up so if it's as like a spam, like a community spam filter. So if it, you know, at, when, it, when five people flag something, you can do an action and a trigger to like unpublish. There's a lot of cool stuff with that module that you can, you know, it's worth checking out. Um, so yeah, we created the, the I, basically these sessions over here, the right, the links, those, those are just views. Uh, I used a filter or an argument so that we could filter by one of the, the taxonomy terms that we, we added. So there's a you know, session category like uh, business, business side, code and development, design and usability, showcase and strategy. Those are all part of a taxonomy and I just added a filter or an argument to the view. Uh, the your picks, I can actually go through and show you the view. So your, your picks is kind of cool um, because flag module, like I said, integrates really well with, uh, with views and I can actually, I can actually filter out all the nodes so it shows you only ones that you've actually flagged. I need to log in. Oh, 
What's it's admin, right? So we had to clear everyone's personal information. So. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, sessions. Should be a lot better. Actually, go to the theme version so you guys can see it themed. It's not right. It's loaded. Oh. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so go to sessions. Okay, so I'm going to edit the view. So as you can see, using the flag module, um, in order to access all, all the flag information, <coughs> you need to add a relationship to your view. Uh, it won't actually <coughs> give you those options by default since it's uh, it's joined from a different, different a separate table. You actually need to create that relationship manually. Um, and so you, I can click on it and show you. Uh, basically, you can choose a label, and then if you have multiple flags, it'll let you choose which flag you want to grab information from. In this case, we only had one flag, so session voting. And then down here in the fields, you're actually given some extra options to uh, show the flag information. So the counter. Okay. Um, and then on the pick, on let's see, users picked, added a, f I added a, oh, here you go, another relationship. So the, Um, I don't know if there was a lot of documentation on flag, but uh, I've used it before, and I think just sort of installing the module and checking out, clicking through the views options to see what's available. Um, that's probably a good way to start. Actually, this doesn't, okay, yeah, so you can see include only flag content by current user. Okay, so I could, I could have created a, a flag, um, another filter to show only flagged nodes which actually helps for like a, a global flag, which is another option you can do with flag module where uh, you, you can flag, there's only one flag per node. So every, everyone can't flag the same thing. It's just like there's, if, if someone flags it, it's flagged. If, if someone hasn't flagged it, it's not flagged. And so that's kind of the way we did the attendees in the homepage where um, you know, we flagged the user and then uh, we, we showed the, the users from that flag. Um, that's question. Question? I just wanted to answer somebody's question. Flag is unusual, and there's really robust Oh. So if you're looking to learn about the flag module, check the Drupal handbook. Okay. Are there any other questions? Um, any other sections of the site you guys would want me to go through on the dev side? I think we're kind of cutting time, kind of close. To sign up. Uh, I actually, okay, the question is how does flag compare to the sign-up module? I, I haven't worked with the sign-up module, so I'm not sure how they would compare. Um, sign-up module is for events. Oh, through event, through event registration. Okay, so the question is how to, how, okay, so the sign-up module allows you to basically sign up for an event using, I think it's the event module or the, the date uh, module. Anything, anything with a date field. Right, with a date field, okay. Um, there's not as good a views integration. And for this, we didn't really need to send out email notifications about your, your signing up or anything like that. It was sort of a, a loose, yeah, there's like a loose relationship, I guess, between things, just things that you wanted to kind of bookmark. And in and, and that sense, it's, it's essentially a bookmark. It's basically the same thing uh, using the flag module. So, uh, other questions? Are there, anyone want to see anything specific development side before we move on? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, actually, Mike went through and helped document all the modules that we used and, and what went on with that. And that's actually listed on the case study. So it'll show every single module used on the site with the description of kind of why we used it or how it was used. Um, so it's kind of helpful to see. Can you post the link to that on the IRC? Yeah, actually. Uh, let's see.
There we go. And then is it slash IRC, Mike? There we go. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, I also kind of created a, a custom module to do the scheduling for us, and I can kind of show you guys a, a glimpse of that. Um, what I did was I kind of hooked into CCK, and, and I provided my own menu callback called manage slash schedule, which provides a form. And in there, I do a query to find all of the sessions that are available. And then I join on all the CCK fields. And I uh, actually output those as, as, a, uh, as a form element. And um, I'll include this code, too, with the distribution so you guys can kind of poke around. But uh, basically, it lists all the sessions. And it sorts them by the day, the room, and then the time. So when they want to move things around, they can go in here, find the, find the session they're looking for and then actually change the day to Sunday and change the room um, and then change you know the time so it's kind of cool not that I could uh, for me the time to take to try and go do that would have been more um, so I, I didn't really go out and look very hard um, I don't know of anything personally that you could edit multiple nodes through one pass uh, on, on one screen. I, I've not seen that before, so uh, yeah. Um, go ahead. Like if you understand it, Rob, there's no code in there that actually helps creating the schedule that's optimized for all the things that are being implemented. Yeah, so the question is there's no optimization code for, for scheduling or anything. Um, no, and I can actually show you uh, what we use to help realign all the uh, the, the schedule stuff too. And that's actually just another view that uses the same template that I created to help output the view in the table form mm -hmm. that it is. Um, but it actually adds a little information about how many people have registered for that specific one. So we can see, oh, I haven't added on this one. Um, is it really? I'll log in really quick and so you can see. So there you go. So it has the actual numbers of people that have been you know, flagged for that, that particular session below it. And again, this is just a view. Um, the way it looks, the way it looks, I, I created a template that is included in the, in the distribution that actually loops through all the view results builds another array, like a grid array. So I have a grid, actually, but it's in the form of a variable. Then I loop back through that again, and then output the table. So um, yeah, Mike. But look, um, Chris and I actually, th this is also a view that we can get into. Um, but if you notice, what, what, what we want to, the reason the count is on the schedule for everybody, we're trying to take away any bias. Uh, in terms of anybody, one, one, of the, one of the feedback things we got was the problem with the people who submit sessions early, the counts are uh, unnaturally high versus the, somebody who's uh, scheduled later. Um, the other thing, so, so we took, took away the numbers on the schedule, um, just, just so that you, uh, you didn't have an idea of how many people were actually signed up for that one. Um, and we also, at the top, I'll give away the code, it's not that hard to figure out, but, but in parentheses you have next to the room. So uh, the 100, this, this, all, this room will hold 444 people. So that, that four up there tells me this is a big room. The two plus tells me that it'll hold about 250 people. The one plus, that's 125 people in that room. So that, that way if I know, if I've got 183 picks, I can't move this one over to the 1600 room. Okay, but but the reason I did it that way was trying to remove bias so you guys actually looked at the sessions that are out there. Because some of the really good sessions aren't necessarily in the big rooms. Um, and, and that was the main reason for trying to remove bias so uh, 
there, there's really good stuff, and, and just because it's in a big room doesn't mean it's good for you or rank for you. Next question. Oh, okay. Good question. So he asked about uh, how the rooms are organized and, and such. Um, I actually created the session and then added CCK fields for room, time, and day. And that's actually what allowed me to create such an easy form to use back here, or in the other one I showed you, that form, because they're all CCK. It's essentially just a node. And that's information about that particular session. And that, to me, is sort of semantic in the fact that this is a session, it has a time, day, and a place where it's going to be held. So there's no real need to you know, use a taxonomy term because I guess that's another way to look at it, but I, I felt it was more metadata specific to the session itself. Um, and that was kind of cool too because it allowed us to, to output the session um, information when you click on it. Afterwards, it now shows you know, when it's been scheduled and information like that. So now, looking back, you know, two months from now, you can actually browse all the sessions that happened. We can actually go back, add a, CC, a CCK field to embed the video from the talk, and then you know you you have all the information about the session still here, and it's it's going to be available for you know hopefully a, a long time for people to use. Um, okay, we're running a little tight on time to to wrap up. I want to be able to answer more questions if you guys have them too. So. Uh, before I move on, are there any other questions about the development stuff or anything we covered? Okay. okay. I get one. Yeah, actually, it should be in IRC. Uh, at the bottom of that, it should link out to the, the, the file. Um, I'm going to be posting a new version because I did the scheduling stuff last week. There's, there's going to be a new, new link out to download the new package, which includes the new scheduling form that I created as well as the scheduling views. Um, and a quick plug, if you guys are interested about how I did some of the view stuff, like the featured attendees on the homepage with the JavaScript rollovers, or um, the schedule with like the custom layout of the schedule, I'm going to be doing a view session tomorrow, views templating and theming, so I can get into code and actually show you guys some of the stuff from that. Jason? I think that answers my question, but I was, I was going to ask, um, how did you implement the uh, featured speakers yes. on the front page? Yeah, so the question is how we implemented the feature speakers in the home page. And that was essentially, it's a view with jQuery. Um, I wrote the jQuery to scroll through. I was actually using the jQuery scrollable uh, plugin, and it didn't do what we wanted it to because of the way it showed things. I wanted to be able to show uh, this. When it got into this position, I used a class to basically show and hide certain data from the view. Um, and so that's how that was created. It's actually kind of cool, too, because the way I wrote it, we could add as many people as we wanted to, and it would just keep rotating through. Because I'm just taking this, this is just a div, and every time you click, it just moves the div to the back of the set or to the front of the set based on forward or next. And then it resets the, the class on the first one. Um, go ahead. Is, um, you guys have a lot of navigation that allows you to direct very certain navigation to the site. We have a lot of related content links, which are Is that done statically during the design process? Oh, oh, uh, um, like. Okay. Oh, okay. So that stuff, uh, we actually, after you do a lot of lot of sites, you just kind of realize that if you don't think things out beforehand, then you have to like, once you get to a page, you kind of get stuck there. And so we thought it'd be kind of cool to add some of that stuff where it shows like, you know, what are the other sessions the person's doing. So we just created a view and drop that into the as a block. So that shows based on the user they're looking at, which which sessions they've proposed. Um, some of the ones. So that's all pretty good sign. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess it kind of starts from the wireframes. And I think we did actually add some of that to the wireframes um, mm -hmm. that first round. We kind of said, well, it's cool to see the user's information, but there's other stuff about the user that's probably related that we could, we could get from the site. So a lot of that is from views. Um, it's not from a specified you know, set of other modules. It's just simply using views with filters. Um, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the homepage thing? Or? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he asked about using views bulk operations as a way to sort of manage that kind of stuff. Um, I actually, the first, first build through the site, I'd use views bulk operations as a way to 
uh, choose the session. So my thought, we, I thought we were going to have more sessions than we had time for. So my thought was I would publish to front page any session that would actually become a schedule or on the schedule. And so I created a view that has a drop down to let us bulk publish those nodes. Um, but we didn't end up needing it. But uh, if you are looking to do multiple operations on a set of, of nodes, uh, check out the views bulk operations module because um, you could actually write your own hooks into it to provide any functions you want, any functionality you want. Um, kind of limited, I guess, in the fact that it's just sort of an operation instead of entering text. I, I, I don't know if you can, you might be able to do that by writing your own, your own hook, but a little customization. But for the most part, you can do things like add something to a taxonomy term, add a group of nodes to a taxonomy term. You can uh, change if they're published, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so we're at 10.53. Um, back to the slides. Okay, so theming. Um, we kind of covered a lot of that stuff mm -hmm. as we went along. Uh, do you guys have any questions about... Let's just move on. <laughs> okay, ongoing maintenance. This was kind of a kind of a forethought, but also a little bit of an af afterthought as well, but uh, allowing multiple administrators. And that was, it was really nice, the fact that we had the camp organizers really involved in this. Uh, I think Chris Fano, Mike, and Chris were all on there. I know Rain was on there a lot. Um, John Romine uh, that helped set up everything. He went in and edited all the information about how to, you know, how to get here and all that kind of stuff. So it was really good to have people that knew what they were doing because we were able to hand it off without actually having to show them how anything was built at all, and they were able to figure it out. And part of that was actually due to the fact, I think, with the fact that we used pretty standard modules, um, using views, flags, CCK. Those are all really standard, simple to use modules. And I think, you know, anyone with a little bit of experience in Drupal could kind of hop in the site and figure out what was going on. Um, Another thing, just in general, to running a camp website, some things to keep in mind were uh, follow up with the contact emails. We got a lot of emails to, to the contact form and stuff about you know how to get here. Should I bring a laptop? Should I do this? That it's good to follow up on those really quickly so that people can register for the site and, and you can get a large attendance like we have today. Um, keep the fa FAQs updated. That's really important too because then you don't have as many contact emails. Um, <laughs> and then organize the schedule uh, so. In general, just organizing the schedule in a way that you know you can accommodate the size of the sessions and that you don't have people standing up and kind of, you know, trying to get people to register earlier and that way you know what you can count on size-wise. Because I've been to conferences before where, you know, the room is half the size that it should be and everyone's sitting on the floor. And that, that's no fun. I mean, obviously it works and it's a free conference so no one's complaining, but it's always nice to be able to plan for those type of things and keep that in mind when, uh, when running an event. So... Um, with that, we'll open up to any other questions you guys have. Jason? I just wanted to say, uh, job well done, because I know how hard it is to put a site like that together. Two and a half weeks to get the first version of it launched with the team and everything like that's pretty amazing. So, job well done. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And thanks for putting the time into you know, the documentation and the case study and the research yeah. like you awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the case study. Um, Mike actually wrote up a good amount of it too. Um, he put in a lot of perspective of, you know, just running the camp in general, and I think that really shows through and kind of hopefully helps guide anyone that is running a, a camp or any of their own, you know, meetup type uh, type thing about how how the site should be organized, what what things to consider, and stuff like that. Um, Mike also went in and yeah. He, he also went in and uh, I had in our rush to kind of get, get it out the door and, and, and release the code, I kind of wrote a little bit so when you install it, you'll see that on the home page there's like some directions. You know, Mike did, went through and, and touched those up. Um, you added some other stuff too, right? And then you're going to release a theme, I think? Yeah. So Mike, Mike actually went through, created his own theme based on that, that release that I put out so that you guys will have an actual theme to wrap around if, if you guys are just looking for something. Oh, cool. Right. So that's really cool. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think I think Zen helps a lot with that too because you can get in with all the classes, you yeah. know, all the ID tags there that which he just wants to do. Yeah. 
<laughs> he loves jumping in there and really, you know, getting really writing, specific about class names in this long. It's awesome. <laughs> View, view, field, 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 view, field, 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 view, 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 view field, underscore, field, view, yeah. Hey, it's unique, right? It's unique, so it's perfect. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we're complaining about that in my session. Do you mind telling us one more time where the code is that we can download? Yeah, it should be linked to on the bottom of the, uh, the, the there's, in the news on DrupalCampLA.com, there should be a post that has the, the session stuff. There's actually a modified version that we're actually trying to get published on the front page of D.O. Um, but Mike, can you maybe add the link? Yeah, or, uh, I'll just repost. I posted an IRC. Okay. I'll post it there again. There's actually a, a better one on, on Drupal.org. And yeah. The latest. You can link out to that. So, uh, li Mike will link out to the Drupal.org write up that we've done. We've had to modify it a little bit. But um, that's a good one to check out. There, there'll be a link on the one on the campsite to the Drupal.org one. And hopefully, you guys will see it on the homepage soon. Chris Fana? I have two questions. Yeah, we're not. Um, one is, do you plan to release the, the Israel as a as a small profile or as a, as a feature for the features? Uh, the, the question is if we plan to release it as an install profile or with the features module. Uh, currently, no. Uh, Time-wise, probably not going to happen. Um, the, pro the install profile I've done I've done a few before, and they're actually. As friendly as they are, they're actually a lot of work because you have to end up doing a lot of custom queries because you don't have, sometimes you just don't have access to the functions that are there from the modules and you end up having to look at your database, dumping some of the queries out and writing those custom and and uh, they're a little cumbersome. I, I, I am interested in features though. I do want to check that out. I think uh, this might be a good opportunity for me to, to try out that module. So may, maybe, we'll see. No promises. Yeah. Oh, oh great, yeah, I'll, I'll sit in on that. We can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, Scott's got a good um, Capistrano setup. We use Capistrano, um, which is normally used for Ruby on Rails. We actually use it for our PHP deployments and uh, pulls our code out of GitHub, restarts the, the, the PHP process so that way our, uh, our, our, um, our code caching is, is clean and it uses less memory and uh, makes it easy for us to just deploy stuff out. So. And we also have a few nice little functions in there to like copy the database to our local machine from the development server, right? Or copy all the files so that we can kind of have a, a clean uh, working copy locally. And actually, in the in the case that I wrote up, uh, a couple of links that are helpful in that regard to, to getting that set up. And we actually released our Capistrano deployment script for you guys to use. Uh, there's a bunch of variables at the top you have to change for your specific settings, but uh, that's all included. So you guys can can go ahead and, and use that. And hopefully, make it easier for you guys to deploy stuff. Um, you, do, you do need SSH in, installed on your server to be able to deploy with Capistrano, though, so just so you know. Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. You know. So, I just wanted to take a couple of my questions, too. Um, I'm going to be talking about the services module at 4.30, or 5.30 today, and 4.30 tomorrow. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about general, kind of like, how you can do iPhone apps, um, things like that. And tomorrow about how you can do flash and flex apps uh, and connect them to Drupal. So check it out. Uh, we have we have business cards up here too. If you guys want to get in touch with us, we have our email on them. Um, yeah, feel free to come grab some. Thank you. It's in the package. Go fast. Yeah, yeah. Cards are gonna go fast. Yeah, yeah. Gonna go fast. Oh. yeah they're gonna go fast. Yeah. Do you have any more? I have more cards. Yes. How many cards are you actually using? Um, I want to say thirty. Give or take. With the core modules, yeah. I never got around. Besides core modules. Oh, not that many. Not that many. Uh, flag. U C C K. Um, let me see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Hey man, I do ERP software with Drupal connections. So I totally want to chat with you. Oh, context? Yeah, so what that does is you can say, oh, if I'm viewing this node type or if I'm viewing this view, stuff like that, you can actually set classes to the body tag or you can set menu items as being active. So so when you go to click on a schedule a session, you'll see that the schedule button is still highlighted. That's because we uh, come in session. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, oh, the date, date module. Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm nice. Thank you. We, we, we had to customize them by hand. That's right. <laughs> so, I'm curious, with the, with, well, how, what would you estimate the real cost of I think it was 10? It was about 12,000. Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we, we track our hours, every bit of our, our time. Oh, no working. Because we're a virtual company, we're, we're all work from home. You know, no team. Up, so, um, with the hours and our rates. Yeah. I don't know if it's amazing that you can do it in two and a half weeks. I know. So, okay. it, was, it was a lot of work. Up, so. Very yeah. impressive. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll be going to uh, Oh, very cool. Yeah, the teaming stuff. Yeah. Uh, okay. And there's a full list on the case study that we have too. Yeah. Oh, there's a full list of all the modules and it'll tell you what we use. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Okay. I should. That's awesome. Do I have to? Is there a second one? Who's after us? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Who's after us?